Hey, welcome to the Tulsa World Scene Podcast. We're devoting this uh, podcast today to a special uh, topic, basically uh, reservation dogs, a shot in Oklahoma series that is near and dear to a lot of our hearts. And I'm joined by a couple of uh, special guests, longtime friends who are not in our entertainment department, but uh, wanted to be on this special uh, Zoom podcast. Uh, why don't you two guys uh, introduce yourself? Well, Jimmy, uh, my name is Eric Bailey. I work at the Tulsa World Sports Department. I've known Jimmy forever, known Tommy for a long time, too. Uh, Creek, Cherokee, and Seminole. So a little bit of everything. Enrolled Seminole. Went to school at Haskell Indian Nations University before moving on to the University of Kansas. So uh, that's uh, been at the world since 2004. So uh, almost been 20 years at the world now so far. Wow. Tommy? Yes, I'm uh, Tommy Cummings, um, native of Oklahoma, uh, born on a Menominee reservation in Wisconsin. Uh, I'm Menominee Creek um, Potawatomi, equal parts, one eighth of each. Um, and I grew up around in McIntosh County, not far from Okmulgee, where Reservation Dogs was uh, has been filmed and um, I'm with the, um, oh, what I do, I'm with the Dallas Morning News. I'm the arts, one of the arts and entertainment writers. And I, I um, just cover arts and entertainment, do some digital pro producing. Uh, I've known Jimmy for, what, 60 years, it seems. We've shared basketball courts. I mean, that's, it goes, it goes uh, you know, that deep, you know, back in the day. Outdoor courts, even, back in the day. Uh, and I'm not sure I introduced myself. I just said it was the same podcast, but I'm Jimmy Trammell, a uh, former sports writer, been an entertainment writer since 2014. And in terms of the show, you might think of me as, uh, I guess, White Steve, because <laughs> I looked around at my wedding party the day I got married and I saw uh, Junior Blue and Richard Hicks and George Little and Aaron Pierce and Chris Ross and thought, I'm the only guy without a native card. I'm, I'm White Steve. Uh, but I do love the show, and you guys can speak to this, Reservation Dogs. It just feels like all the people we all grew up with. You know, that's exactly how it felt. You know, I attended the uh, series premiere this year over at River Spirit Casino, and it was almost like a family reunion, just seeing all old friends I hadn't seen in years come together. And one of my friends came and just said there was a distinct Native energy in that building, in that auditorium, watching those two episodes, laughing at the same jokes, getting the same jokes. It, it was so much fun just seeing everybody uh, before uh, the, the, the start. Uh, this lady turned around and looked at my buddy Forbes, who I was sitting next to, and said, I remember you from Haskell. And Forbes' first words to her were, hey, no stories. I'm sitting next, right next to my mom. Don't, don't say that's it. Just, just say hi. So, But that's, that, that, it, it is funny because it was just such a good time. And th this show is really, I'm really just in awe of this show and looking forward every Wednesday or Tuesday night at 11 o'clock. I know the new, one, the new ones are released. And last night or two nights ago on Tuesday at 11, I was watching first thing. Tommy, you have any thoughts? Well, first of all, uh, I appreciate Haskell Institute or, or what is it, university now? Yeah. Uh, my father played football there in the, now this is how old I am. My father played foot there, football there in 1916. That's how, that's how long ago that uh, my dad had connections with Haskell University and it was Haskell Indian Institute or something at that time, but so. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm down here in Texas, where you, you you know you can't find very many Native Americans, but I watch it with my wife. I was very jealous that you guys got to go to that premiere. I was. Uh, I would have loved to have been here because I think I looked through the pictures and I think I know everybody there, or I have some, or are related to half of them. And um, I watched the show with my wife. My wife is not Native. Uh, she's from Fort Gibson and. We we watch it and we both have different reactions because I'm, you know, I'm seeing things that it's like a documentary of how I grew up. You know, I grew up around Eufaula and, you know, my goal was to get out of town and go to California, just like, you know, just like those kids. Um, 
I hung around with a, you know, a bunch of kids that were exactly like the characters I'm seeing here. And a lot of the, uh, the church customs and these other customs that you'd see in the uh, Creek Nation, I mean, that's, that's what I lived. Like last week's episode, it was, uh, you know, I knew exactly what they were talking about because we had, we had a wake in our house from my father and we had like 60 people in our house just kind of laying everywhere and, you know, having, you know, having um, just kind of a communion with, um, you know, native food, you know, softy and um, uh, fry bread, walled onions. And uh, it was just, to me, I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh, yeah, I've, I've seen this all before. And my wife is just fascinated. Eric, you said you kind of enjoy the Easter eggs that are there for uh, the Creeks or other uh, tribal members that you know, they may get this, but the other people don't. You know, it's been, it's really neat. And, and going back to that, you know, just everything I see and, and what kind of, if you don't mind, I want to kind of touch upon what Tommy touched, talked about, you know, just seeing reminders of how you grew up. And that's kind of how it was just seeing the house, uh, the last episode, Alora's grandma's house and seeing the layout. That was my grandma's house. Master bedroom, back to the right, bedroom straight down the hallway, the kitchen, everything, the, the blueprint for that house was exactly as my grandma's Indian home in, in Oklahoma, or in Holdenville, excuse me, she lived in Holdenville. So uh, that house in the kitchen, everything is just built just like my grandma's house, exactly where the bedrooms were, where the dining room is, the one car garage. I just got such a kick out of just seeing that. And that really took me back. It really did. And I was, things like that, it just kind of, like Tommy said, it just takes you back to your childhood. Um, some of the things that I laughed at on this left, last episode when they called uh, uh, Willie Jack's dad Hodge Dog, Hodge Dog. Uh, of course, what's what's uh, drunk in Creek, uh, Tommy, Haji, uh, Haji, 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 you got that. And, you know, the, one thing that, uh, you know, learning, seeing this season, and I'm a big Sterling Hargo fan, I'll tell you, I get to, I cover OU football, and I get to see a lot of stars, and I, I don't think nothing of them. Baker Mayfield, eh, eh. if I met Sterling Hargo, I'd be pretty pumped up. That'd be like me being starstruck. <laughs> So that's my goal. But the way he's really introduced some of these words, it seemed like in season one, when he said Chugachi, when when uh, Bill Burr yes, said that was my name, I knew exactly what that was. And late in the episode, they explained to the viewers what that word meant. But we're not seeing that as much this this uh, go around this season. I mean, uh, Stehetki, you know, Stehetki's white person, and they talk about relationships with Stehetki's. Stehetki's eating wild onions. That was in one of the season episodes. And then Hodge Dog, you know, <laughs> Hajimi's drunk. I thought that was, you know, interesting. And, and there's just some words that they're using they're introducing the the, the, the Muscogee language and it, it's really neat just to see it and I kind of smile when I hear those words it it's it, and home bucks when they were in the and Tommy knows what home bucks Jay means home bucks when they're in the one car garage after they say the prayer of Lord says home bucks time to eat let's eat so when you see those that just really means something special to me and I just really like like the way that Sterling Harjo and 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 uh, the writers have really introduced those words and those culture into without explaining and just making it just seem like it just flows into the script. Yeah, I watched the uh, the house, um, those homes that they use. It's like it's actually just like me watching closed circuit television of my friends' houses in Oak Monkey. There is a housing subdivision um, to the northwest of town on Oak Monkey, and I spent you know, weeks and weeks visiting friends over there. And it is the exact uh, layout of these mutual help homes that Creek Nation, and I'm sure Seminole Nation, and uh, I know Choctaw Nation um, have, uh, you know, set up in their housing programs. And so it, it, it nails it. And the, the language too, as you mentioned, um, Eric, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's just watching my, you know, watching my upbringing and my wife is sitting there and I'm saying, you know, okay, you want to know more about me, watch this. You know, this is exactly what I went through. This is the same teenage angst I had. This is the same environment, the same, you know, tribal customs, the church customs, it's all there. And Sterling has done the most excellent job of, uh, of capturing that. Sterling's a, uh, uh, 
has some roots around from where I uh, grew up and his, my grandfather uh, founded a church called Halabi Indian Baptist in the McIntosh County and Sterling was a, was a member there for a while. And I think he, I think he ended up in Holdenville, but uh, yeah, he, I used to talk to Sterling kind of on a regular basis to get his uh, input on stories I would do on like Sherman Alexi or some, you know, there's some sort of Indian issue. Um, but, you know, since he's a big time now, I hadn't been able to get a hold of him, but uh, you know, I want to tell him that, that his show is, is awesome. I wonder what a Plains Indian is doing among all the, uh, you know, as the spirit guy. Uh, <laughs> that That's puzzled me. I want to ask him, how in the world do you cast a guy like that? Why don't you get a Creek Red Stick Warrior or something like that? So it's just, I, I come over it with a fine tooth comb. <laughs> you know, I thought it was interesting, too, on this past episode, and you mentioned Sterling Harjo, and, you know, the last episode dealt with, dealt with death, and I was watching the credits at the end of the, the, the um, end of the show, and the end credits, they had a dedicated a dedication page, and some of the dedications was to his great-grandmother, uh, and it's funny because, in, in a way, we're all related somehow, and I know that, but I guess my cousins told me this, his great-grandmother, Isora, was my grandmother's aunt. So somewhere out there, we're, we're family trees kind of intertwine. But I thought it was really neat that if we looked at that dedication page, there was a lot of, Will Sampson's name was on there. There were a lot of names, just native figures that it, yep. th that episode was dedicated to. And I thought that was a really, really neat tribute. Not only the show, but that dedication page. And if you get a chance, if you haven't seen episode four, look at the credit scene. And, and there's a list of about eight to 10 names of people that may mean something to the Indian community or maybe some of the writers and such too. Hmm. I, I see so many things that have happened in the episode from, from the get-go uh, that like, gee, my friends or somebody would have done that. We uh, we used to have an open open campus at my high school. We could go downtown, walk at lunch, come back. And of course, somebody would ruin it by stealing something from a chip truck, you know, or something. <laughs> so of course, they're going to steal a flaming flamers, you know, truck to start the, the whole series. And, and of course, they're going to hit a deer and try to put it in the, in the trunk. Uh, all these other things. <laughs> I've heard deer lady stories, you know, for a long time. So all these things are incorporating uh, I, I, we embrace it because we know it. I wonder how it's being embraced by people who are outside this circle, because I, I have no way of knowing that. But it seems to be universally and critically acclaimed. I'm looking for someone on the East Coast or the West Coast, New York or L.A., to use the word snag. Are you snagging yet? That's what I'm waiting for. That, growing up, when I was a teenager, that was something everyone we, everyone talked about their snags. And, and, and that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for words like that to take, uh, take, part, take root in popular culture. And, you know, snagging, it's funny, uh, in covering OU, uh, covering OU athletics, there was a couple of times I had to go cover some Native American events down there, too. And there's a fraternity at OU called uh, Sigma Nu Alpha Gamma, snag. That's the, the Indian fraternity, the male <laughs> Indian fraternity is called snag. So uh, don't forget that. But no, things like that. That's what I, I, I want to see some of these things take root, like skoden, 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 studis. Are those words going to get used more and more? I, it's something that's being introduced through this series. And it's so cool. I mean, I get a kick out of it. And like Tommy said, I, I agree 100% with him. When I watch this, the, these, these shows, it takes me back to my childhood. Now, Tommy, I think we're, we're Bucky now. We're old guys. We're not the, it's hard to relate with the kids today, but I, I think we're some of these old guys. But still, we still talk, still joke, still laugh the same way as like when we were teenagers. There is a famous curse word that the series has brought to the forefront that keeps being, being said over and over again, almost a trademark of the show. Is that word an Oklahoma thing, or is that popular outside of Oklahoma as well? Uh, well, growing up in the 60s and 70s around there, I uh, <clears throat> I didn't hear it that often, you know, and you had you had these old OGs that, um, you know, made sure, um, you know, you didn't say things like that, and your parents were very strict, and yeah. you had these Baptist deacons who would beat you to death if you said <laughs> something like that. So it was... You know, it was, I didn't recognize it as much. It was like, uh, it was like on the Christmas story when you said the, you know, <laughs> the, the mother of all bad words. It was like that. Well, 
but you know they, they throw it around quite often so that's what you're talking about jimmy that well, um let, let's get off that and give give me either your your favorite episode or your favorite character <laughs> You know, my favorite was just, I really liked episode three of this season, uh, just simply because how they brought everything together and how they got rid of the curse. I mean, that that still resonates with just laughing at how, you know, the spirits watching, they're singing Tom Petty at the, at the lake, they're at the water, and the spirit says, I know the song better than these guys. He didn't say guys, he's, he's one of those words that we don't use, but I just thought it was neat, the prayer and 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 the uh, the song, the Tom Petty song, I really really got a kick out of hearing that. And I like the second episode this season too, when everything was going on. Uh, I, I think this season is really making a turn. I'm anxious and excited that they're showing ten episodes this year. We'll get two extra episodes. I think that's that's perfect for this thing. But I, I really like those two episodes a bunch. I, I did going back to last season. I, I, it was really gut-wrenching but the bill burr episode when they talked about you know the death daniel's death that was tough that was hard and, and you knew something happened and how they introduced it that was a tough tough episode to watch because there's so many people out there me included that relate with losing someone to suicide and, and it's so hard it's just so heartbreaking and 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 you know that really grabs you it really really grabs you a lot and that was a tough episode to watch but um, this show, it, it, it hits all your emotions. I mean, it really, really does. It hits all your emotions. Uh, I agree. I, I think uh, you covered it all as far as, you know, what I've seen from it that really resonates with me. And, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, when I, the, the, the dear lady, you know, I was thinking about the Stegini legends and the other um, legends that, you um, you know, creeks, in you know, uh, have come up with, and um, you know, those things really. I mean, one of the things I'd like to see is how the medicine men would re interact with the community. You know, and, and Tommy had mentioned this a little earlier too. Just churches. Uh, you know, my my grandma Lena Bailey was a member of uh, Middle Creek Number Two. Uh, she she's just lifelong member there, and. Um, you know, when the episode last season, when Willie Jack went to Daniel's grave after going deer hunting and talking to him, uh, just seeing the, those elders sing hallelujah at the gravesite, and that's how they ended the episode, that was touching too, because that's a song uh, in, in Creek churches. That's that's like, you know, that's everyone knows that song. And for him to, you know, for this the showrunners to end that episode that way, I thought that was really, really touching. And, and Tommy mentioned the churches as well. I mean, this past episode, when they're singing at the very end, uh, you know, Tommy and I have both been to funerals where Creek singing, you you hear those songs during, during funerals. You know, my dad, my uncle, my grandma, everyone at funerals, we hear those traditional Creek sing songs, Creek hymns. So, um, yeah, so the things like that, that, that takes me back to, I mean, it really, it, it touches a lot of feelings when different things in these episodes. In the uh, <clears throat> speaking of Creek Hems, in the November edition of Oklahoma Today magazine, I'll have a story about uh, uh, Creek Hems and their Ooh. how they originated from back east, and you know how the tribes have their own version. Uh, I talked to um, there was a instructor in uh, Claremore College that I can't remember his name right offhand, but. He helped me with uh, finding a lot of uh, people. I'm trying to get a hold of Watko, the guy that was in the, um, this past episode, and he sang at the uh, bedside uh, of, of the grandmother. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I can't wait to, you know, flesh out that story a little bit more. One thing I'd like to see uh, Sterling um, do a little bit more on is on the medicine man thing, like I was saying, he, uh, in, when I played high school basketball, we would play predominantly native communities, even some around Holdenville, like uh, Sasakwa and New Lima and some of those schools. And, um, you know, when we would play other native um, schools, the medicine men came in and applied medicine to us and made us take all kinds of, uh, you know, um, kind of voodoo-like um, um, uh, medicines to, um, to give the other team bad luck. I'd like to see more of that. And, you know, there's all kinds of plot points. 
Yeah, I think we all have our own ideas of like, man, I wish they would do, I wish they would go spook hunting, you know, or these other things we, we did that they would incorporate, but uh, I don't think they're going to invite us three in the writer's room, you know, sadly <laughs> enough. They, they seem to be doing okay without us, but they're doing great without us. Well, we probably shouldn't stay too much longer. We don't want to wind up our Zoom and get short-circuited, but this this show means something to people. It means something to people. What do you guys want to say about that? It's great. I mean, it, it's just, it's so awesome and it's touching. And, you know, last year after we're watching those first eight, eight episodes, people watched them all the way until this last premiere. And, and it does, it really, it's really special because like Tommy said, what we talked about, we can relate. This was our childhood growing up. Uh, the elders that we're seeing, we're turning into elders, we're getting older. <laughs> but you know what, I still see a lot of myself and some of these these older people too, I can still see them joking around and laughing. And that's the thing. I mean, there's there's jokes, Native American natives have jokes that maybe a lot of people don't get, but we get. And uh, we, we still we still get those jokes. And, and, and I'll laugh just instinctively at some of the way that some of these accents or these, you know, just the looks, the facial looks, expressions. I laugh at just that alone because you get it. And uh, and and this last episode, there was one last thing that really stood out was, you know, talking about your feelings. I mean, it's it's hard for sometimes for natives to just talk about their feelings. And uh, I, I think that's something that it, it really probably hits some people hard that it's something what people need to do among the native community. We need to open up more, talk what we what we feel. Uh, but no, I'm so glad. And like I said, Sterling Harjo, he he's he's taken our our natives to new heights, and, and it just means some of these actors, these the, what they're doing and how they're doing. I just it's amazing how they're really taking us to new heights. Yeah, I'm certainly glad we moved beyond stereotypes and actually, you know, um, show people, show the people, you know, you know what the grassroots um, native community is like. So and I'm really happy about that and hope Sterling continues that. Okay, parting thoughts, any, anything you guys want to say that you didn't get a chance to say that you hope to say on this podcast? It's neat being excited about it. That's it. I think we covered most of everything. Just being excited. I mean, just happy, thrilled. And like I said, when I went to that season premiere over at River Spirit, it was refreshing just seeing everyone so excited and so happy. And that means so much just for me, seeing other people happy, especially natives. It meant a lot. It meant the world to me. And I hope that that can continue. Yeah. I, I mean, like I said, I use my wife as an example. She's not native, but the uh just the way some of the plot points resonate with her, you know, and, and I've been watching, you know, these other publications write about the show and seeing, you know, kind of judging whether or not they've determined whether or not, uh, you know, the plot points mean anything. And, I, and all these emotions and events are universal to the human experience. And I think that's what Sterling has really nailed with this. Hey, well, guys, uh, thank you so much for joining me on the special Tulsa World Scene podcast about reservation dogs. Heck, we may do it again sometime. You never know. But uh, uh, certainly enjoyed it. Uh, love the show. Look forward to each episode. And uh, you guys want to say goodbye before I get us out of here? Jimmy, thanks a bunch. Tommy, it's always good seeing, seeing you, man. I appreciate the opportunity to, to talk on this platform, Jimmy. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, me too. Uh, Mado. Mado. Okay, let's go then. Ha, 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 ha.